Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video here in the preview event for Modern Horizons 3. So thanks again to Wizards for having me. And today we're looking at Eldrazi Ramp, an archetype that got a lot of love in this newest expansion. And one of the more exciting cards is actually a land. Ugin's Labyrinth is pretty crazy in what it does. We play it and we can imprint a colorless card with mana value 7 or greater from our hand. And then if we do, we can tap it for double colorless instead of just a single colorless. And then in the late game, once we have enough mana we can also return the exiled card to our hand and then uh, cast it maybe on the following turn so we're never really losing the exiled card unless the opponent can remove the labyrinth somehow so this card is amazing as it enables two mana on turn one and we can cast any colorless spells with that two mana we're not restricted to just casting eldrazi for instance so we can maybe use it to cast a chalice for x equals one on turn one and if you're on the play especially that can be bag breaking for some strategies that rely on a lot of one drops to function so that's one potential avenue then we also have some two mana ramp cards we can play on turn one that way so we can start ramping a turn sooner so we've got guardian idol mindstone and the iron crank making colorless mana since we are trying to ramp into some bigger spells and then we also have a new two mana eldrazi here it that heralds the end is a 2-2 saying a colorless spells we cast with mana value 7 or greater get a 1 mana discount and other colorless creatures we control get plus on plus 1 which is a pretty nice bonus especially when combined with the scion tokens we get from a Kozilex command this card has been quite impressive an instant that lets us choose two modes between making x spawn tokens we can scry x and then draw a card can exile a creature with mana value x or less and exile up to x target cards from a graveyards so this card is incredibly flexible it's fine early also fine late can even cast it for x equals zero to maybe exile an opposing token while still drawing a card even though we don't get to scry so that's totally viable but again a great card early but still a great card late as we can make a bunch of spawn tokens and then pump them up with it that heralds at the end or maybe with our forsaken monument which gives all our colorless creatures plus two plus two and then whenever we tap a permanent for colorless mana we get to add an additional colorless mana and when we cast a colorless spell we gain two life so this card kind of does it all and essentially doubles up our mana so it becomes trivial to cast some of our seven plus mana cards and then to kind of bridge the gap we're playing the full set of thought knots here giving us a bit of hand disruption can be useful against some more controlling strategies even though we already have four copies of cavern of souls in our mana base to make our eldrazi uncounterable and then getting up to seven mana we're playing drowner of truth this is actually a land as well that enters tapped and makes a blue and a green and then it's also a seven mana seven six so we can pitch it to our ugin's labyrinth and then if we top deck it in the late game we can still cast it and get a pair of scion tokens out of it and then we've got the full set of Devourer of Destiny, which is great to have in your opening hand as you now get to look at the top four cards of your library and choose one to put on top. So that can also improve the consistency at which we play our Ugin's Labyrinth and maybe have a seven mana card to pitch to it since we can always just pitch the Devourer itself. And then later when we cast it, we get to exile target permanent. That's one or more colors. So it's kind of like a mini Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, just playing the one copy here since it's still powerful, but of course at 10 mana, pretty pricey and we get to exile two target permanents when we cast it and get a 10 10 indestructible that will slowly mill the opponent as well and then we've got the full set of Null Drifter as our final creature can evoke it for two and a blue so it's kind of like a three drop but at the same time if we evoke it it's still a seven mana card we're technically casting so that way we can maybe play Chalice on three and then the only card it counters is our Warden Power Stone which is another decent ramp card that's been in Historic for a while but now also reprinted in Modern Horizon so it's legal in Modern as well and this taps for two colorless and enters a battlefield tapped and then a Coastal X command, even though we can cast it for X equals one, is not really a three drop. And then now we can also evoke a Null Drifter. So it kind of fills out the curve while still being a nice seven mana card for Ugin's Labyrinth, as well as an extra finisher to help close out the game. Because if we cast it, we still get to draw two cards. And then we get a 4 4 flyer with Annihilator one. So when it attacks, the defending player has to sacrifice a permanent. So again, we could go a little bit more over the top with more expensive Eldrazi, but I've found that just keeping the curve more reasonable so we can still cast our expensive Eldrazi without a card like Forsaken Monument on the battlefield is maybe the way to go. 
and then our mana base besides Ugin's Labyrinth, as we mentioned, has Cavern of Souls, which can make colorless mana while still making colored mana for uh, the Evoke on Null Drifter, for instance, and then occasionally can also help cast a Drowner of Truth in the late game, and that's also, of course, a land. And then we've got some utility lands, such as Radiant Fountain to gain life against aggro. Inventor's Fair can also passively gain life if we have enough artifacts and can maybe help tutor up a Forsaken Monument. And then we also have two Conduit Pylons, which lets us surveil one when it enters, giving us a bit more card selection, but in a pinch it can still make colored mana for some of our blue spells. And then we've got one island in case we need to search up a basic. Could also play a basic waste to search it up, but uh, in case your opponent channels a Boseju, for instance, we cannot get waste, so it's good to have an actual island. And this is also more blue mana for some of our blue spells. And then Rivulet is both a colorless source to synergize with monuments, so it still doubles its mana, but it's also capable of making blue mana at the cost of one life to maybe evoke a Mold Rifter or potentially cast a Drowner of Truth. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we are missing our powerful land. But uh, we have a functional hand, I would say. Devourer gets to maybe find something exciting. And Cavern making stuff uncounterable could matter against Kahira. Although now that I think about it, our opponent's probably playing a cat deck. So yeah, Chalice on one could still be fine. So we can reveal that, and then do we want to draw any of these? Forsaken Monument could be alright. We'll still need to maybe draw a land for it, but seems worth keeping here. And then wait to play a Chalice on one later. And we see a Johnny's Welcome. Yeah, let's just play the uh, Chalice right now. And then next turn I can double spell Iron Crag into it that heralds the end. And hopefully our opponent's got a bunch of one drops in hand. Well, so far so good. Found Ugin's Labyrinth. So we can pitch Devour to it. And later still get it back. Not that we needed the mana right now, but it will ensure that we can uh, play Forsaken Monument next turn. Helix takes care of our 2-drop. And yeah, play Monuments. And next turn play Devourer. 3 mana for War Leader's Call. The green could also be for Collected Company. And uh, yeah, we can cast our Devourer. Probably wanted to tap a little bit differently, so I could actually return the Exiled card, but we can do it next turn, and then get rid of the War Leader's Call. Don't think I'll be milling my opponent with Rivulet. Alright, there's the new Ajani, of course one of the better payoffs for the Cat deck. Our opponent's playing the Ajani deck here, clearly. Find an Inventor's Fair, which we can use to maybe tutor up some other artifact. But for now... Can return the Devourer. Cast it. And then probably just exile Ajani. And smash. So yeah, had I not mistapped earlier, I would have been able to sacrifice the Inventor's Fair already. But should be able to do so next turn. Alright, a Leonin Warleader can be pretty good. And another Labyrinth. So let's see what we want to search up. Could get another Chalice, play it on... X equals 3, for instance. Although now that they played War Leader, I'm not so sure they're a Collected Company deck anymore. So, could also just get a Mind Stone and sack it to draw. Maybe that's better and hope to find some of our payoffs. Alright. 
null drifter counts. So can't wait to cast it next turn. Instead of uh, evoking it now. And then we'll just send the one devourer. I guess if we send both they have to chump, but war leader attacking is kind of annoying. So I'll just send the one and hope they don't have removal for my author 8 8. Pride Mate resolves. So that's where a Chalice on 2 could have maybe countered it. Even though we have a couple 2 drops ourselves. And our opponent is attacking. Oh, I'm gonna block the War Leader here. Pride Mate grows once again. Up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. Still has to trump right now. And we'll start by casting Null Drifter. Can surveil with the pylons. Don't need another monument. So now we can cast our chalice for two. That resolves, so we don't need to worry about a lightning helix gaining the opponent life. And our opponent's just gonna take it. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Actually, don't have a 7 mana card to pitch to against Labyrinth. So, could be more exciting, I suppose. But maybe we'll draw one by the time we need it. Yeah, I'll try it out. Mindstone. Name Eldrazi. And a cutthroat. Okay. So play probably a Mindstone. Opponent didn't play a 1-drop, so I don't know if Chalice on 1 is all that important right now. Could also go for Iron Crank first. And then next turn maybe have a peek with Thought Knot. As our opponent plays another Cutthroat. Can keep holding on to Ugin's Labyrinth on the off chance that we find something expensive. Well, Ulamog counts. with Forsaken Monument, it's realistic to cast. Vein Ripper, I see, so there might be some vampire shenanigans with Sorin happening. I think we can take the Vein Ripper here, in case they top deck Sorin. And then now we know Chalice on 2 will be effective, although they might just empty their hand first. So, Double Blood Artist. Could see them start attacking just to get in some drain, but opponents can be patient. So yeah, what's our plan? I mean, at this point I can just cast Forsaken Monument and then next turn cast Ulamog. So I don't need to pitch Ulamog to the Labyrinth necessarily, but if I do, then I can go Monument into Mindstone, into maybe a Chalice on one. Yeah, I guess that's kind of neat. And then next turn we can just get back Ulamog and probably still cast it anyway. So play Forsaken Monuments. Mindstone's basically free since it taps for two mana. And then I can Chalice on one. Not that I expect it to do much against this opponent. And, uh, sure, I guess we can start attacking. Opponent chumps, maybe they actively want their cutthroat in the graveyard to get it back. But now with a life gain from Monument, I'm not super worried. Alright, opponent's got the Nightmare. Sack a creature, get one back. That can be powerful. So that's how they're planning to drain us to death. So 
So we want to wait for the opponent to activate Nightmare so we can maybe exile a creature to get it out of circulation. So yeah, Chalice on two would have been the move. I guess we can do it now. And that'll counter their future Nightmares. Or I can get back Ulamog and then cast it, which is probably still fine here. And then just exile their Blood Artists, maybe. And then next turn we can play the Chalice while we also keep attacking. Celebrants into Nightmare. So sack a creature, get one back. And then now can start removing some of their threats, but Chalice on two is probably a good starting point. And then we can still Kozilex command for two, which is a four drop. So it doesn't get countered. And then uh, maybe draw. An old drifter seems fun. And then I could do the same here. Could also exile cards from their graveyard, actually, with Kozilex command, so that's another relevant interaction in this matchup. So there's not going to be much left here once we're done. Exile the top 20 so we can have a better idea what the opponent's up to. Don't see a Sorin in exile, but maybe they have another way of cheating out the Vein Ripper. Alright, I guess we'll get another Ulamog trigger here to have another look at their library. Alright, so here's another deck list for you in case you were curious. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not particularly exciting, but functional. Chalice on one, turn two, turn three, Power Stone, maybe setting up turn four, Monument. Turn one, a land or elves. Okay, play this one tapped, I think. Opponent does have the Labyrinth, so it is an Eldrazi deck. And yeah, this Path of Annihilation's looking scary. Making tokens, and now all their Eldrazi can tap for mana. So, yeah, we're definitely on the back foot. So Chalice on one doesn't seem all that impactful anymore. I think I just uh, play the Mind Stone. So that if we play Power Stone, we're more likely to ramp out this Forsaken Monument. Another Eldrazi making spawn tokens. And a bunch of elves. Well, now I regret not playing Chalice on one after all. So our opponent can pick up Ulamog, and they're probably close to casting it here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe one mana away. It's gonna be a malevolent rumble. So yeah, next turn they can cast Ulamog, which uh, yeah, is pretty good when facing an Eldrazi deck, I imagine. We were just a little too slow here on the draw without early acceleration. And now opponent can keep up the pressure with her 2-drop as well, pumping all the Scion tokens. So yeah, seeing a slightly different approach to the Eldrazi deck. Can 
now play Monument and then still play our 2-drop, gain some life. But I don't think that's going to save us. Can play Chalice on 1. But our opponents get to mana to cast Ulamog. So unless I draw my own Ulamog here to get rid of theirs, we're probably dead. And... Well, we still have it left in the deck, it seems. Now, I will say this red-green approach maybe doesn't have as many 7-mana cards to pitch to the Ugin's Labyrinth. So it may be a little bit less consistent in making 2-mana on turn 1. Wow, we actually did it! Ulamog off the top. Well, that's lucky. So, cast it. Exiling probably their path and Ulamog. I will have to sack two permanents, but Chalice doesn't matter anyway. And then Chalice and Alain can go. Well, old school Ulamog beats new Ulamog, confirmed. I guess this is technically not even the first Ulamog, there was another one first. Since this used to be called Nulamog. So we need to come up with a new nickname for the Defiler. I guess her opponents got another Path of Annihilation, wasn't paying attention to what they had in hand, so yeah, maybe getting rid of the one in play wasn't super relevant. But yeah, the game continues, can maybe draw with Mindstone. A Drowner we can cast, so that's not bad. So play Drowner. And play Idle. And then we're probably on the mill plan with Ulamog. Two attacks will do it. So we just need to survive in the meantime. Still can't believe we actually top decked our one off Ulamog. But this was the time to do it. So yeah, we'll see what they can come up with. If they have their own Ceaseless Hunger, they can cast it, so that might do it. We see the new Kozilek. The new Emrakul would be pretty effective. So they have outs, that's for sure. And just a land, so they can still draw with Arch. And they still have a lot of mana to work with. And what's it gonna be? The suspense is killing me. Opponent goes all out. I guess they can sack a bunch of stuff to grow these. That's fine. And our opponent explodes. Wow, Ulamog for the win. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a promising hand. A labyrinth pitching Null Drifter. Cast a turn one. It's that heralds the end. Could command for one next turn. Can do it at instant speed. And then next turn, Thought Not Seer. Sterling Grove, fair enough. So an Enchantress deck. So we'll uh, draw a card and scry, make a token. And then do I want Radiant Fountain? I think we can do better. 
Take my turn. Power Stone's not bad. Could play that and attack Drowner and then wait on Thought here. That way I get to play Devourer next turn, maybe get rid of the Sterling Grove. Seems fine. Not too worried about a board wipe just yet. Could also keep the Drowner in hand, although it's going to be difficult to cast without blue and green mana. Since we only have the Cavern to help cast it. Another Grove means they now both have Shroud, so won't be able to target them with a Devourer anymore. So that's concerning. But I guess we'll just have a look with Thought Not Seer. And then I can still maybe get back my Null Drifter for next turn. And then hope they sacrifice a Sterling Grove at some point. I see Approach, Solemnity, Amarakul. So this is probably a 9 lives combo deck. So I have to take the Solemnity. And then if they sack Sterling Grove to get 9 lives, I can at least get rid of the other Sterling Grove with Devourer. Burnished Heart is colorless, so I can't actually target it with a Devour. So we'll uh, get back Null Drifter instead. Yeah, Annihilator I guess is a way around Shroud potentially. So we can cast a Null Drifter. And attack. I think our opponent's trying to figure out how we cast it for 6 mana, but it's thanks to our 2-drop here. And I don't mind trading for Burnished Hearts if they offer. Opponent takes it. So they're likely gonna tutor something up with Sterling Grove, no? They could have also put a stop in their upkeep to still draw whatever card they put on top. Opponent just sacking the Burnished Hearts, so... Not sure what their plan is. Well, I guess we'll attack and find out. Alright, it looks like they're giving up here. Null Drifter annihilates, so they can sack a land. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a three land hand. It's not the most exciting, but it's functional. So play that tapped, turn two Mindstone, turn three. We'll see what we want to do next. Probably Power Stone. Opponent might be on an Affinity style deck instead. So for now Power Stone, another tap land. And then we could cast a big Kozilex command. Or maybe just a Null Drifter here. Synthesizer is scary. So we're mana short of Null Drifter. So instead, I guess Kozilex command. Can maybe wait for them to make a token and then get rid of it. Could also evoke Null Drifter to try and hit a land for turn. If I play it that heralds the end, then we can play a 6 mana Null Drifter next turn, so that's also tempting. Alright, let's try that. And then I'll probably draw, make some Scion tokens, or we can get rid of their artifact. Just an automaton for now. And a Mirror Enforcer, so that will trigger Synthesizer. And another Mirror Enforcer, so that's another large token. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. So, 
exile creature with mana value extra less, and then do we want a token or do we draw? Since I will be casting a Dole Drifter next turn most likely, so I may as well make a token here. Ugin's Labyrinth is a little late to the party. Um, probably fine to just uh, start by casting Null Drifter. Can play Inventor's Fair and then kind of postpone the decision on Labyrinth whether or not we want to pitch a card to it. So we've got a decent block on the Mirror Enforcer, but the Construct is still going to hurt, so can maybe trump it with the Eldrazi spawn. And there's a Cannoneer, one of the payoffs here for the Artifact deck. Yeah, that's going to be scary too. So Cannoneer up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, I guess we can uh, jump here and then command for one or for zero. We'll draw, get rid of this, sacrifice. All right, and our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we are missing our powerful land. But uh, yeah, can't complain. This is a keepable hand. Start with Guardian Idol, Mindstone, hopefully ramp out Monument, and take it from there. Draw or Devour a little late. Can be a Jani, so a black white life gain deck. Okay, so Mindstone could still command for zero just to get rid of their token. Don't actually hate that since we still get to draw off of it as well. Maybe hit our land drop. And then exile. And this only transforms if they die, but not if they get exiled. So no land for now. So we'll need one to play Monument next turn. If not, cast Command to make a Scion, and then we'll get there on the following turn. Pride mates. And still nothing. So yeah, we're on Kozilex Command for two. Opponent gonna gain some life here. Okay. So I'm leaning towards exiling the Pride Mate over a Jani. And familiar, so there might be a bit of a sacrifice theme to it as well. Opponent can't attack into our Guardian Idol. So Scion tokens, exile. X equals 2. And then now play Monuments, which will unlock a bunch of extra mana for next turn. Could also sag both Scions, so I can have two mana after I resolve Monuments to play it that heralds the end. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And get a nice 4-4. And then next turn with a land, I should be able to cast Ulamog. 
It's gonna be Strength of the Pride. To gain some life. And uh, this is indeed a cat, so probably don't want to block it. Okay, time for Ulamog. And we can get rid of Planeswalker and probably their author Ajani. Got some more curve toppers in hand. And another Ajani. Our opponent's definitely committed to the theme. We exiled all their creatures so they can get Pride made back from the graveyard. Surveil. Don't need Mindstone anymore. And uh, can do some cool things here. If you're a cat lover, look away. I hope you find your and then uh, Kozak's command is not a bad leftover when we've got a bunch of mana we can sink into it. Alright, this was total annihilation. Can get rid of their only blockers so they don't have to click through it. And there we have it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand doesn't really do enough. This one's not great either. I still have a Devourer to maybe improve my hand slightly. So I'll give it a shot. And then see if we can find some mana acceleration. And uh, yeah, maybe a Warden Power Stone makes sense here. As a turn three play. Our opponent black green cutthroat, so maybe an aristocrat style deck. Wanna prioritize playing my colorless sources in case we draw a Forsaken Monument. Don't wanna have Island in play if possible. Second Cutthroat, can eventually exile one with the Kozilex command, but for now, play Power Stone. And that can maybe set up our Devourer for next turn. Don't think our opponent's going to be double blocking, so might as well get in for two. And a Cruel Celebrants, okay. I see the uh, Shifting Woodlands. Could be a way to maybe copy a card that's in the graveyard. We're just gonna play Devourer. And sure, a Cruel Celebrant can go. Hit for two. Next turn we can do the same. So yeah, didn't have the most exciting opening hands, but thanks to the Devourer we got to find Warren Power Stone. Now Gidrog. And then do we want to sack a non-token creature? Not really. Can just play a Devourer next turn. And get rid of it. And smash. And then Kozilex Command's pretty good with all this mana now. Another Celebrant. And a Nightmare. That makes sense. A good way to recur creatures from the graveyard. So we can just exile some of them. Can do this for two and then another for two. Uh, 
and then we're not really close to casting Ulamog. Unless I want to make Scion tokens with Kozilek's command, I guess. But uh, the game's probably gonna be over here. Yeah, Kozilek's command's been pretty impressive. Very flexible. Good early, good late. And Devour, kind of the glue that holds the deck together. Pretty nice with Ugin's Labyrinth especially. Alright, so we got to see this Eldrazi ramp deck in action, and I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. Of course, there's a lot of different ways to build these various Eldrazi decks, since you've got a lot of different colors to choose from, even though the core of the deck is still, of course, a colorless deck, but you could splash blue, green, red, or a combination of them, and they could all work out fine. But I like the consistency of 7-man Eldrazi enabling Ugin's Labyrinth in this build, since you get the Drowner as kind of part of your mana base, and since you're not playing any one drops usually, it's fine to play the tap land, so I kind of like that consistency. Devourer has been great as well, smoothing out our opening hands, making those explosive openings more consistent with Ugin's Labyrinth, and then Kozilek's Command also impressed as kind of an early game ramp card and removal spell as well, but also late game it's still quite powerful as well, uh, helping you dig towards your win conditions. So yeah, pretty happy with how the deck turned out. Again, could still build it in a variety of ways, could maybe go a little bit bigger, include more top-end payoff cards, but it feels like we have enough 7 plus mana cards that it's not really necessary to go all in on the huge Eldrazi, since we're kind of more of a mid-range Eldrazi deck with a few big ramp cards and payoffs, but we don't have to go to 10-12 mana for the deck to function. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.